Hey guys, it's Adrian from VHA here bringing you a new video. Have you ever lost your remote and you're looking for a backup solution uh, to be able to control all of your TVs and infrared devices? Well, the great folks over at Link and Link have a great way to do that. This is part of their E-Series uh, line of devices, specifically the E-Hub, which is a five-in-one uh, device. Not only does it control infrared devices, but it also controls RF devices, as well as a motion sensor, a temperature sensor, and a humidity sensor all in one device that basically fits in the palm of your hand. And the great folks over at Lincoln Link sent me over uh, this eHub, as well as their eMotion, which is a motion sensor by itself, and their eThS, which is their uh, temperature humidity sensor as well. Uh, to take a look at and see what all we can do with it. So without further ado, let's get started. So you can pick up the eHub over at Lincoln Link's Amazon storefront for about 40 bucks. Now again, this is a five-in-one device, so it's going to control everything that you need to control, as well as have a motion sensor, temperature sensor, and humidity sensor. But you can pick up their ETHS, which is their uh, temperature and humidity sensor, for about 20 bucks, as well as their E-Motion, which is just the motion sensor, for about 15 bucks. So all these E-Series products are great. And like I already said, we're gonna take a look at them and see what all we can do with them. Here we go. All right, we have three little boxes here. And I mean, these sensors are so small, it's crazy how much they have packed in such a small design. But let's get these boxes opened up here. Now, the first one we're gonna look at is the Hub, which is the five-in-one, meaning it has infrared, RF, temperature, humidity, and motion, all built into this small little package. Uh, it comes with a micro USB cable for powering it. It has instructions for getting it set up in the app as well as double stick tape for getting it mounted wherever you need. Look how little this thing is. And you can see in the back, it has a port for adding uh, an IR extension cable or for hitting those devices in hard to reach places if you needed to but you would have to get that cable separately if you didn't already have one. Next up, we have the temperature sensor. Uh, surprisingly, it's the exact same size. In this box, uh, let's see, we have the micro USB cable, as well as instructions for getting it set up. And then here is the device itself. And again, it's so small and compact, basically the same design as the hub. You can see they are the exact same size. I like how they have the icon on the top so you can differentiate between this one and the other devices. Now lastly, we have the motion sensor. Pretty much the same thing in this box as well. Uh, we have the micro USB cable for powering it, as well as instructions for getting it set up, and then your double stick tape for getting it mounted wherever you need it to. And you can see all three devices lined up next to each other. They're all the same size, really super cool. Icons on top to be able to tell them apart, which makes it even better. But that's it for everything that comes in the boxes themselves. Let's move on to the next step and get them added into the Lincoln Link app. To control these devices, you will use the Lincoln Link app, which can be found in the Apple and Google Play Store, depending on what type of phone you're using. Uh, but once you get the app downloaded and logged in, and then you're just going to hit the add device button. We'll agree to the privacy terms if it's our first time using the app, which of course it is here. Click on add a new device and then choose E-Series Hub and Sensors. We are going to add the E-Hub, which is the first one there at the top. 
once you plug the device in, after a few seconds, the light will start blinking, and that's how you know it's in pairing mode. Now it wants us to put in our Wi-Fi information, so you can either choose from the drop-down list, or since mine is hidden, I'm going to type it all in here. We'll hit connect now, and then give it a little bit of time to complete the connection. And that's it. Now we can choose the location of the device. So I'm going to have it in the living room. Let's go ahead and select living room here. We can give it a custom name if we want to. I'm going to call it LNL Hub for Link and Link Hub. You can even custom name the sensors if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave them generic. And we're done. Now each of these three devices basically have the exact same setup, so I'm not going to go through the same thing for each one. Uh, but you can see here in this last image, I have all three connected to the app, and they show on the dashboard. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step, and I'll show you what all you can do with each of these devices from within the app. Here we are in the Link and Link app. And you can see the three devices shown there on the dashboard. And if uh, we hit the LNL hub first, you can see right there along the top, we have the temperature, humidity, and motion sensors shown there. This is also where we could add our IR and RF devices, and we'll come back to that in a minute. But if we hit the three dots up in the top corner, we have the ability to back up or restore our configuration, which is kind of nice in case something doesn't work after you make changes. But you can disable it if you don't want it monitoring. You can uh, access the mod bus as well as settings. Uh, so if we click on settings here, this is where we can uh, change the name of the device or location if we wanted to. And we can also uh, see all of the device information. If we wanted to check uh, for firmware updates, we could do that here as well as uh, name some sub functions. So if you wanted to change the name of any of those sensors or even add a photo for that sub function, you can do that here. Sub devices is what we were talking about earlier, like your IR and RF devices, which we haven't added yet. Under notification settings is where we can set up uh, notifications. That covers most of the eHub. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the eMotion. So it takes a second to load up the timeline uh, or history of the device, but you can see it does have motion detected currently. And as you can see, uh, there are some adjustments that we can make so we can change the amount of time that waits uh, to push notifications when motion is detected if you want. I have placed mine in my kitchen, uh, so maybe when no one is home I could arm that and it would uh, alert me if motion is detected. But if we hit the three dots up in the top corner, we have the ability to export data, we can access the mod bus, it even has an installation guide as well as the settings. So going into settings, just like before, we can change the name or location if we wanted to. Originally, I was going to put the sensor in my game room and ended up changing my mind and moved it into my kitchen. And you can see all the device info here if we wanted to. This is where we come to check for firmware updates as well. We can also set up our notifications that we want to be alerted on also. Well, that's it for the eMotion. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ETHS as well. Uh, so it will take a second to pull in that data, but you can see we got the uh, temperature and humidity right there on top. And then that nice clean graph below showing the uh, historical temperature and humidity for the room. And if we scroll down a little bit, we have the ability to set high and low limits, um, which will then allow us to receive alerts on. And that's for both temperature and humidity both. And since they are separate, uh, if you wanted to, you could choose to turn one on and not the other. So that makes it kind of nice. If we hit the three dots up in the corner, we have the ability to export the data as well as access Modbus and go into settings. And just like before, we can change the name and location. Uh, we can take a look at our device info as well as check for firmware updates. This is also where we can create notifications under the notification settings as well. But that's about it as far as what you can do in the app. I do want to go back and add an RF device, specifically my living room fan, uh, which uses a remote, just to show you how easy it is. So we're going to hit the add appliance here, and I'm just going to choose fan right there in the middle. 
Now we can select our brand here. I'm not really sure what brand of fan this is. I installed it a long time ago and it doesn't even have a brand name on the remote. So I'm going to hit the button down at the bottom and just add it manually. So this is an RF remote, so we will select that here. The location of the fan is the living room, so we're going to give it a name here. I'm just going to say LR fan for living room fan. And as you can see here, it brings up all the button options here that we can program. Now for the most part, I want on and off capability and the ability to turn the light on and off. So we will start with the on button here. Uh, we'll say start learning and we're going to learn a simple RF code. Now it wants us to input the frequency uh, that this runs on. Now I have the frequency, but if you didn't, you could choose to scan here as well. The frequency for this fan is 433.87. So we'll enter that here now we just need to hit the power button on the remote and if all goes well boom there it is it has received the signal so that's a good sign we want you to test it here and if it works correctly then you can hit yes and we have successfully learned the on button for the fan it was that easy and you can do this for all the buttons on the remote I'm not going to go through all of them here as I just wanted to show you how easy it was to get a button at it Let's go ahead and move on to the last step and I'll give you my final thoughts. I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that it is possible currently to add these sensors to Home Assistant utilizing the Modbus protocol. As you can see here in this clip of the forum discussion, there is a way to do it, uh, but it will not fully encompass everything that these sensors can do. Therefore, I didn't want to go into much detail about it in this video. I have also heard there is a full link and link integration waiting for approval with Home Assistant. And once that is approved and implemented, I will look at making a follow up video discussing that. As for these sensors, you have the eHub, which is, of course, the five in one device, meaning infrared, RF, motion, temperature and humidity, which is awesome for 40 bucks. I mean, you can't beat that. Then you have the ETHS, uh, which is uh, your temperature and humidity sensor for 20 bucks. And again, not a bad deal. And then of course, to top it off, you can get that eMotion, which is the motion sensor by itself for 15 bucks. Now I'll have links to each of these from Lincoln Link's Amazon storefront in the description below. You're definitely gonna wanna take a look. I will say that if you're looking to get some of these sensors in an area of your house that also has infrared or RF devices, I would go ahead and splurge and get the full eHub. That way you get everything all in one little device. I will also have a link to their website uh, in the description below. And if you aren't interested in these particular devices, head over there and see what else they have to offer. I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, head over to my spring merchandise page and check out all the Burns home automation merchandise. And if you're looking for the latest smart home gear, you're going to want to check out Simonet. I'll have a link in the description below. Head over there and see what deals they currently have running. If you're looking for the latest smart window treatment, you're going to want to check out Smart Wings. I'll have a link in the description below for them as well. Head over there and see what deals they currently have running. If you're interested in buying and selling stock or maybe cryptocurrency, you're going to want to check out Robinhood. I'll have a link in the description below. If you sign up with that link, you and I both will get a free share of stock. It's a win-win for both of us. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you'd like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.